Hello everybody, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about explaining the deception behind the new age. So before I get started, I just want to make a quick disclaimer that in no way am I bashing you or anybody through this video for new age beliefs. If you are still in the new age, this is because I was in the new age myself just two weeks ago and I used to believe in these things myself. So in no way am I trying to claim a position of superiority. This is just coming from my honest testimony as someone who used to believe in this and was then saved by Christ and I'm here to expose the new age for the lies and deception that are behind it based off my Christian faith and based off of what God has asked me to do as somebody who used to be in the new age to warn people who are still in it of the dangers but I'm not coming against you personally. If you don't agree with my new beliefs, I'm not forcing you to watch this video and I actually suggest you click off. But if you're still in the new age and you're just slightly curious about what I have to say, then I definitely recommend you to keep on watching. Alrighty, so first things first is that I myself am an ex-tarot reader. So the first topic that I'm going to touch on is the topic of tarot. So Starting off, I'm going to try to base like as much of my evidence in scripture as possible. According to Deuteronomy 18, it says that people should not be consulting divination tools. The devil and the demons are very clever in how they utilize these tarot cards. So I was looking into like how these originally came about and apparently they first originated in Egypt and they were supposed to worship like the Egyptian god of wisdom and Christianity would be considered an idol because it's not the most high god like idolatry is a sin. Anyway, so looking into it, I feel like tarot cards are laced with symbolism and they borrow like a lot of symbols like from Christi Christianity as well because we have the devil card. In the tarot, there is also the Judgment Tarot card, which depicts an angel with a trumpet um, awakening and resurrecting people. But something that I noticed is that in the tarot, there is no God card, for example. So that, that on its own is like a little bit eyebrow raising because like, okay, like if these cards are not occultish and like satanic, then why would there be no God on it, for example? And the other de deception behind it is that um, these cards, like when you're shuffling and stuff, when you're new to tarot and you shuffle these cards, like you think that um, we, you learn immediately that like the beings that are helping you, assisting you in this reading are angels and spirit guides, but these are actually not angels and spirit guides. And how do we know that? Well, it's because first off, the Bible like specifically warns against divination. Like if real angels like were behind the cards, why would, like, the Bible, like, try to steer people away from tarot? The most common argument is because, well, you know, the church just wants to have control over people, and if people start doing their own cards and reading their own futures, then they won't want to go to church anymore. And that's a very convincing explanation, probably made up by the enemy, but the truth is it's because that the symbols on the tarot are meant to unlock something in your brain, and they're also a very highly addictive tool as well, one that you can constantly shuffle and go through for answers, but actually it's the demons that are the ones behind this and they're pushing the cards out. Because think about it, um, God wants us to connect with him to, through prayer, and, they, and he wants us to constantly pray to him, consult his word, etc. Why would he ask us to go to tarot cards when he can already speak to us directly? And why would, if, and if angels like who are um, servants of the Most High God, and God is, as we all know, God is like a very direct God as well. Like he's not just like one that hides behind stuff. Like in the Old Testament, we see a lot of times when people ask God for signs, he puts himself out there in a way where like people can't deny it's him. Like sending fire from heaven, for example, um, allowing Moses to part the Red Sea. But tarot cards are kind of the opposite if you think about it because when you're doing your tarot, it's like the beings that you're dealing with are not making their presence known. They're not like, hi, I'm God. Like, they aren't, they aren't very out there. And it makes you wonder why you need tarot in order to communicate with them. It's almost like they're trying to hide something. And guess what? Newsflash, they are. They're actually demons. They're not angels or spirit guides. And they're not here for your highest good as well. In case you need some proof... When I was doing tarot one time, I was doing a Twin Flames Part 3 tarot reading. Um, right afterwards, um, right after doing the reading, I went upstairs 
and then I suddenly heard these loud footsteps coming from downstairs. And then I, and then, but there was nobody there, but it was extremely loud. It was some, like somebody was walking around and trying to destroy things. And then, like, I called my mom to come downstairs because I was really scared. But then when she came downstairs, like, the noises immediately stopped. That was already a red flag. Like, why would this happen right after doing a mediumship-based tarot reading? It was a little bit spooky, I'll admit. All right, so the second deceptive New Age practice that we're going to get into is astrology. So much like tarot, um, the devil really understands how to manipulate people, and I see this a lot. So tarot and astrology are here because people want answers to things. Like people are worried about the future, and people want to know why things are the way they are. With astrology, it's a very categorical way of like explaining um, people's futures and their destinies, and these are based off like the planets and different signs and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And the thing with all things that relate to the devil is that there's some accuracy to it, which is obviously why people would be drawn to it in the first place, but it's not 100% accurate. It's just somewhat accurate. So, and to give you an example, like when I used to do tarot, so what I noticed is that I would sometimes ask like the cards the same question over and over again, and sometimes like the same answer would pop out, but then sometimes other times it would just give me a different answer. Now, the way that people in the New Age used to explain this is by saying that tarot falls out based off your current energy. But with God, it seems to be a very different story. It's like, when you ask him a question, the, the answer typically doesn't really change. God is much more forthcoming and straightforward. And with astrology as well, people can get hooked on it very easily. Like I was being like, oh my god, I'm acting this way because I'm a sun in Gemini, a moon in blah, and a, and a, and a rising in blah, and then... Before you know it, it starts to twist your entire way of thinking, and then when you go meet people, you're like, oh my god, is that person a so-and-so? Is that a so-and-so? It's sort of like personality tests and stuff. And, like, the more you get into it, the more it really manipulates, like, your way of thinking to the point where you start needing to use astrology as a way of explaining everything. And this is, um, this is evil in itself because it makes people reliant on astrology for giving explanations and for feeling really low, which the devil can then use to manipulate you into feeling low even more. Because they, how many planets go into retrograde like every year? And if you use that as an explanation for like why like you're feeling a certain way, then you start to just allow yourself to feel low just because a planet is in retrograde, even though when a planet is in retrograde, the effect that it has on you is actually imaginary, if that makes any sense. And, an okay, so the third topic that I want to touch on is the law of attraction and how this is actually secretly evil. So, one thing I've noticed about the devil um, after doing some research the past couple of weeks is that, as we all know, the devil was once an angel. I think he was named Lucifer, although there's some debate on whether or not that was his actual name. So he was named Lucifer, and he was God's top angel. So as we all know, Lucifer fell because he became prideful, and he was like, I want to be God. Like, I want people to worship me. Like, he became very arrogant, and he didn't like the fact that God was, like, number one. So God was just like, well, look, man, like, you just, you just can't. Like, you can't, you can't be up here in heaven with me while, like, also, like, committing some, all these travesties against me, wanting to be proud, wanting to be me. Now, nah, bro, sorry, it's not happening. And then he just went, and then Lucifer just went, ah, okay, sorry, that was a bit graphic. Anyway, he just fell to earth, and then he became the devil. So, like, the point is that you can think of Lucifer as that really, or Satan, as that really jealous, like, as that really jealous person who's always trying to, like, be like the best person, but he just can't really get there, so he tries to copy him, except he changes some of the things around. So the same thing applies to the Law of Attraction. So the reason why the Law of Attraction is somewhat accurate is because a lot of these ideas are explained in Scripture. So I know that in the Bible it says, Seek and you shall find, ask and you shall receive. So, the Law of Attraction seems to be very derived from these principles, except one thing that, like, Lucifer leaves out is the God part. Like, what we have in the Bible is you seek God and you shall find, and then you ask from God and you shall receive. But in the Law of Attraction, it just says 
you become what you think and you become what you act and what you become what you do. And I'm not denying these principles at all. Your thoughts definitely are powerful, but where's the God in it? When I was into the law of attraction, like it became very depressive to me because every time something bad would happen, I would be like, oh my God, I manifested this. And then it would make me really paranoid and it'd make me be like, and another thing that's deceptive about the law of attraction is that it seems to have this shunning mentality towards negativity. It's like, oh, you think one negative thought? Too bad, that's gonna happen. And then before you know it, you start becoming really paranoid, trying to monitor every thought to make sure that it's positive and not a negative one. And then ironically, this makes you pay more attention to the negative things. Um, the more you resist, the more something persists. And I also think that another reason why um, the law of attraction has this sort of indoctrination where um, there's such a push um, away from negativity is because the devil is actually trying to get you um, more desensitized to the negativity that is actually within the New Age movement. Because if you start off going in and just being like, like the first rule is positivity only, no negativity allowed, then when you go into the New Age, you're going to start thinking like that as well and just being like, so every time something negative pops up, you're going to try to deny it. So this is exactly what the devil wants, because there are a lot of things in the New Age that are very sketchy. Like, for example, tarot cards. When I first got into them, like, I knew about how people were saying that they were demonic, but I just ignored this advice anyway, which was obviously my own responsibility and my own thing. But, like, there's the, there's the catch, though, the denial. Like, there are a lot of red flags, like, surrounding it. Like, all the people saying, oh, tarot's, like, no good and stuff, but people still get into them anyway. Just like with the rest of New Age, there are a lot of red flags. So yeah, this is exactly what Law of Attraction does to you. I'm not saying that like none of it is rooted in any truth or scripture, some of it is, but if you want like a more accurate Law of Attraction, then what you should do is turn to prayer, because in prayer, like you are resting your faith in God. As we know, God is uh, all perfect, like all loving, all good, benevolent God. Meanwhile, we are just humans. Um, in the New Age, um, the underlying idea seems to be that we can become our own gods. And this sounds very promising to a lot of people like, who want to take back power and control over their life, who feel disempowered in some way. However, this is just not the truth. I feel like the New Age wants to convince us that we can be gods, and it starts to blur the lines between good and evil, and also morality as well. Because in Christianity, like, God gives us a moral code for, like, how we can and cannot act. And the idea is based off the fact that us as humans, we're flawed. We're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes. And so that's why we have to strive to be like God. But also, we do have a God that is having our backs, you know? So, like, if I sin by accident, which, you know, happens because I'm still human, I can always repent to God and just be very sincere and be like, Look, God, I'm sorry. I'm human. I'm flawed then God just forgives us, and it's through His grace that we're saved. But in Law of Attraction, we become our own God when we are not God. We're not. Like, it's not like saying that, like, oh, people aren't great or something, but, you know, we're just not God. Like, we're not. Like, we can't do a lot of the things that He does, and that's why it's important to be humble, whereas the New Age is trying to deceive us into being very arrogant and thinking, oh, whenever something good happens, it's like, oh, I manifested that. That was all because of me. And then before you know it, you're going to start be, being and acting more arrogant because you think that you can conceive that of which it becomes into your reality. So you think you are a conceiver like God, but actually God is like the real conceiver here. God is the real master. So this is exactly why the New Age is satanic, because it's secretly anti-God, although you don't really see it. And then the most anti-God person is basically Satan. Like Satan doesn't like God doesn't want anything to do with him, he wants to replace him. So when, when dealing with the New Age, you've got to be very careful and skeptical of these sorts of things. And this is me speaking from personal experience. All right, so the fourth thing that I want to touch on is star seeds. Star seeds. So like, and this one is a very clever um, creation by like Sena, because if you look at like the premise of what star seeds actually are. The idea is that star seeds come from higher dimensions and worlds and they incarnate on Earth and they come here to raise the consciousness of this planet. So if you if you if you just take the guidelines of that story and you try to, you know, think of a person, then who comes to mind? Well Jesus, obviously, because 
Jesus came from God and then he came to Earth to enlighten people in humanity. So this starseeds idea like really appeals to people. I can say that it really appealed to me personally because um, my entire life like I felt like an outcast and a little bit of a weirdo to be honest. But and like Satan really knew like how to plant these little starseed things like into my YouTube recommendations because I was feeling lonely, I was feeling lost, I was feeling disempowered, and then here comes the starseed label and you're like, oh, oh my god, I am a starseed, therefore that must be why I feel so different. And then even though like people say, oh no, starseeds are just here to help everyone and enlighten humanity, the reality of it is that these ideas are getting people to inflate their egos without people even noticing it. It's like, Sort of like everybody thinking that they're like Jesus, even though people don't really make that comparison in this initially. And this starseed idea pushes us into alienation and makes us think that we're different or better than other people when in reality we're not. Actually, in Christianity it says that all man is equal to each other. We're no less better or worse than somebody else. We're all just humans. But this whole starseed idea makes us subconsciously think that we are superior to other people just because we may come from somewhere else, even when this, in fact, may not be true. So this is where Lucifer's deception lies, is that he's like that white witch from Narnia. He feeds that guy at Turkish Delights, and like, Turkish Delights are really sweet. When you eat it, you won't really think much of it. If you actually look at what it's made of, it's bad for you. So this is exactly how you should take every one of the New Age practices, or like, have spiritual discernment when looking at things, Instead of looking at the exterior and being like, oh, is this pretty? Because on the surface, the New Age is very pretty. It's like, oh, love and light, yoga, meditation, namaste, love, 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 light, love, love. But when you actually look underneath it, it's a lot of deception and trying to make people boost their egos and try to push them away from fellow man and away from God as well. The devil thrives in isolation and alienation because he likes pushing people away from each other. And the reason for this being is because when God can't communicate with us directly, other people can give us reality checks and be like, hey, don't you think you're going a little too far with the whole starseed thing? But when you get too attached to this identity of being a starseed, you won't really see that you're getting too attached to it. So when other people warn you, you'll start to think, believe the lies the devil has fed us about other people being evil or being toxic when the real enemy here is actually the devil. Okay, I think that's all like the new age practices that I've been involved in personally and that I've debunked so far. Um, let me know if this video was helpful to you guys and stay tuned for my next videos. May God bless you all in Jesus' name. Bye guys!